everybody, Beth here. Thank you so much for tuning into this haul. Um, I am a reseller of vintage goods, so clothing and hard goods on Etsy, eBay, and Poshmark. And it's been such a long time since I did a haul. Um, we had a crazy weekend. It was the holiday. And um, I've been going yard selling as much as I can, but I just haven't had time to, to film a haul with the little guys. So um, all the stuff I'm going to show you, I have listed in my Etsy store, which I've linked down below. Um, I also cross-listed on Poshmark and eBay what I can, but I focus um, on Etsy the most and just kind of cross-list what I can. Um, yeah, so I've found, found some really great stuff. This stuff is, I'll try to tell you where I got it, but it's a mix of everything. So it's uh, some, some things I got for free, some things I got at an estate sale, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, garage sale, all that stuff thrift store so I have done the math oops and um, wrote down what I paid for everything I've already listed them with the pro uh, the prices and I figured out my cost of goods my net pro or my um, gross sales and what my net profit would be potentially so that's if everything sold at the price that they're priced at right now which is not going to happen <laughs> I will have to adjust prices I'm sure so um, but I only know what I what I listed things for. So let's get started. Again, if you see anything here that you think is cool, you want to check out, um, definitely go check it out in my Etsy store. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And um, I can't wait to show you what I've been getting. So this is not in any particular order, just kind of what's closest to me. So at a yard sale, I picked up these three um, handheld games. So I've got Hangman, Pocket Poker and Battleship. They all work and they're all from 1993. So yeah, I tested them with batteries, they all work, and I just love them together. And um, we'll see we'll see how they do. Uh, I just listed these yesterday, so these are really cool. I got these at it's called like oh, it was called like odds and ends and such or something. It was a perfect name for it because it had like washing machines. But it also had these and other vintage stuff. And so uh, I found these opera glasses from the 1800s there. And they're Mother of Pearl, which this is perfect, in perfect condition. It's not cracked or anything. Maybe that's just, there we go. Um, there are some flaws with them being over 200 years old. So first, we don't have, we have the cap here that says, Limer uh, de Paris. <laughs> There's my my great uh, French, and the middle part is missing on this. If you can see the difference right now, um, and then the other thing is the lenses are really cloudy. Like I I took these off and I tried to clean them, but there's nothing you can do to get that off. So you can't really see through them very well. Um, this would definitely just be like a decor piece, um, and then obviously the metal has a patina um, showing its age there so yeah these are definitely just for putting on a shelf and looking pretty um, and I've seen some listed that had this the holder the stick but I don't know if it's the same kind because I don't see a place that you would put that but anyway I bought these for ten dollars and I listed them for ninety um, the ones that are in perfect condition are going for around two hundred so we will see. Um, I got this at a garage sale. It was near and dear to my heart because I was a brownie for like a year. Um, it's this speckled stoneware vintage Girl Scouts mug and it's solid. Like it's it's heavy duty. Um, it's got a raised logo. Just really cute. So I think I list, I don't remember what I listed this for. But I know I got it for two dollars I think. Okay. I, I think I showed these in one of my early, early vintage videos hauls, um, but I just listed them, so they're in my Etsy shop now. These are bone plates from the 1940s, and they're shaped like this. They can just kind of sit next to the plate, and you put your bones as you eat on them. Um, these are Andrea by Sadek. I, I, don't, I think that's how you say it. Um, I got um, a set of six, so they're all different floral patterns, which is really pretty. Um, a set of six for a dollar each, so six dollars, and I listed them around thirty-ish. Um, they're really cool. Okay, next, 
I got this for probably a quarter once it was divided out. This is um, an Odagiri. Look at this brand. Um, it's an Odagiri mug. So I think it's really cool. There are a lot of these rainbow um, styles where it's like faded like this or ombre. and But most of them are hot air balloons. This is one is obviously a whale. And I can't find any online. So in that way, I think it's a little bit rare. Everything's outlined in gold. It's just a really pretty, pretty mug. So if somebody's into whales <laughs> or, um, you know, sea, sea creatures and stuff, then they might like that. But either way, or if they collect Odagiri mugs, um, it's just really pretty. I love it. So I listed this for about 16 These, my husband wanted to keep so bad, but I told him no. Sometimes you have to make that choice. Um, so these are... Siesta wear, um, like amber glass mugs, and they have a wooden handle. They're double sided with this embossed eagle, and they've got like this copper banding. Um, I got a set of six of them for two dollars, so I listed them for around fifty. That seems what that seems to be what they're going for. The the comp showed like sets of four and stuff, so I just adjusted the price based on that. But they're really cool. My husband wanted to keep them. But I said, let me look up the cops first, so I'm going to be selling them. <laughs> Anybody else have that problem? There are also things that I want to keep that I end up selling because I should. This is solid, too. This is a vintage ice bucket. And the handle, of course, is showing some age. But um, other than that, it's in perfect condition. No, no uh, make or anything on it. But... Um, I got this for a couple dollars at an estate sale and I thought it was pretty cool. I know ice buckets do pretty well. Um, this I mentioned in another haul as well, but I just listed it so I'll say it again. Um, this is a Sadler English teapot. This was actually in my house when I moved in and I didn't think anything of it. And then when I started reselling, I was like, where did I put that thing? And it turns out that it's uh, pretty valuable. It's like, um, it's like raised in the glaze, so you can't really see it. There we go. It says Sadler. Um, the thing is, it does have a lot of crazing. I can't remember when it's from, like the 1960s or something, I think. That's just off the top of my head. So I listed this around mid-40s, I think. And so that costs me nothing. Uh, next, I got this at a yard sale for a dollar or less. The Vintage Miami Dolphins snapback cap and these are consistently going for around 20 between 20 and 25 so I just listed it for 22 and we'll see how it does um, okay next I got these they're so cute I don't know what I would do with them but they're cute um, I got these at a yard sale a few weeks ago so it's these tin uh, like snack trays there's four of them so show you these two and then these two and they're nice and colorful they'd be really pretty like mounted on the wall somehow for uh, like a farmhouse kitchen I just think they're so cute they're in great condition I mean a little, little scratch here and there but um, so I listed these and they've gotten a lot of interest I've listed them on Poshmark as well as eBay all three platforms Etsy eBay and Poshmark um, next I got this at an estate sale my husband actually went because he was looking for blacksmith tools. He just um, he just bought a forge and he's been making knives and everything. And so he's been going to estate sales and yard sales with me to see if they have any um, like files and stuff. So um, he found this at an estate sale. I couldn't go because I was watching our sons. Um, but he took some pictures and I, you know, like circled them, sent them back what to get. And I saw this in the background and I thought it looked cool. It's um, driftwood, some kind of driftwood centerpiece, and um, the base is resin. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's strange because it's not centered. So I don't know if that would drive anybody crazy. It would me, but somebody could set something here. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, I listed this. I got this at the same estate sale. Well, the same, the same estate sale, but not the same day. 
So these are um, Japanese moriage. Uh, it's where they glaze and then they paint over it. So it's really intricate and pretty. Um, the designs on the back are, you can't see this one, but they're different. So I've got um, the sugar bowl and this has got to be like the coffee pot or something. I thought this was a creamer, but looking things up, there's something of this size that's a creamer. So um, and it doesn't really look like a teapot. So I'm thinking this is the coffee um, pitcher. So I listed those. Um, this was from one of my first hauls. I can't remember if I already talked about it in the haul video way back, but either way, I just listed it. It's heavy. This is a coffee maker from the 1940s. I paid way too much for it. I think I paid like $10. Um, I just listed it for around $40. I think it has the original um, cord, but check out that that plug. I wouldn't I wouldn't put that anywhere near an outlet. So obviously that should be replaced, but it's got his its filter and everything, and it's nice and clean. So um, yeah, so that was a cool find. I'm not looking forward to shipping it when it sells, but okay. Um, I'll keep going. So I just talked about these in a haul um, a little while ago. These are their Lamupo Netsukis. Um, they're these little figurines from 1979. Like I said, I talked about them already in a, a haul video. Uh, I will, why isn't that focusing? Um, I'll link it above if you want to go check it out. So I bought seven of these for um, $20 and they're all different animals. They're definitely collectible. So some are more rare than others. I just really, like I said in the video, I cannot find any comps really except for one. Um, the pony selling for like $73 on eBay, but that's a listing, not a sold. So I just decided to lot five of them together and put them up. Um, I can't remember what I listed them for, but we'll see. I just have to start somewhere. So, um, okay, this, this is, um, a really pretty footed, um, fruit bowl. And it's got a nice fruit, um, relief design there on the bottom. Sorry, I'm so tired. Um, the, the comps I'll say carnival glass. It doesn't seem to have a luster to me, but it's the exact same bowl. So I don't know if I'm just missing something, but it's this really pretty amber color. It's four pounds, so it's pretty uh, sturdy. And I just listed this. I got some depression glass. Um, I was, it was this big sale. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere. They were emptying some storage set, sheds and these were in a box that I dug through. Um, so some pretty depression glass. This is a divided plate for like relish or anything, vegetables. Um, I got this pink depression glass, which I know some people just collect the pink, so that's a good find. I have a clear one that has, it's a tray that has um, like cup holders in it, but I'm having a really hard time photographing it because it's clear, so I'm going to keep working on that. Um, yeah, so I got those. I paid... I don't know. It probably would have worked out to like a dollar or less for each of these. Um, okay, this I got at an indoor yard sale. It's just a little planter that says Farm Fresh Apples, made in the Philippines, I believe. Yep. Um, just cute. So, listed that. Got that for less than a dollar. Um, I listed these. They're three um, little casserole dishes. They're by Pyro Ray Dinoware. I don't know. Um, but they're these, this nice um, color glass set of three of them. So I listed those. I'm trying to see what else I have here. Oh, um, okay. So these I got at a yard sale. The box is super beat up, but it was sealed. I did unseal it so that I could take a picture because you really just can't tell what what's going on in there. So I noted that in the listing that it was sealed. They've never been used. Um, and that I did open open the box to be able to take pictures and show what they'd be getting. Um, so there are these Solo Cozy Cups. And um, you can see from the picture, they come in different colors. The one that's in here is white. 
And then there are these refillable solo cups um, and there are 50 replacements in here. So um, yeah, I just, just thought that I would list those to the 73 cents on them. I think that they were from the 70s, if I remember right. Yeah, so those are cool. And if somebody, you know, you can get these replacement things online. Um, so you can find them. Okay, I think that's it except for the cufflinks. So I also listed these really pretty cufflinks. Um, I got them, one of the estate sale I, I showed in the hall, I'll, I'll link above. Um, I got this like caddy full of belt buckles and bolo ties and I found some cufflinks and put those in there too. So um, these are vintage Anson trout oval cufflinks. And they have mother pearl in the back and the fish is really colorful. They're in great shape. So I listed those. Um, and then I, I got these, where did I get these? I think I got these at a little antique shop, probably. Oh, so I don't know, I paid pennies for these. Um, I don't know, I paid maybe a dollar or two for these. They're, I think they're really cool. Now, on the back, the brand says alpaca, which is really confusing. Um, because when you put in alpaca cufflinks, you know, llamas come up on cufflinks. So. But they're, um, they're like a bird and a branch. Yeah, they're really pretty. So I listed those too. Um, I really like finding cufflinks. I don't know why. Um, I guess because I feel like, oops, <laughs> um, I feel like cufflinks aren't made cheaply. Like there's no such thing as cheaply made cufflink. I could be completely wrong, but um, usually people that wear cufflinks often um, dress nicely and, you know, they they wear good quality things. So, so that's my haul. All of this stuff is listed, like I said, and I'll go over my numbers. So, um... My cost of goods for all this stuff was $83. And adding everything up based on what I priced it at, um, listed it at is $700 in gross sales. Um, and then I subtracted my gross sales from my cost of goods, so $700 minus $83. And I also took a percentage of the $700. Let me, let me do that backwards. Um, OK, I took the $700, that's the gross sales, and I took out a percentage for what the fees will probably be. Then I, and then I was at, um, that was like 100 out. Uh, and then I took out $83 from that total to take out my cost of goods. So my gross sales, I took out my, um, put my fees for the platforms and my cost of goods, which leaves me with my net profit, which is what would go in the bank. And that's $512. So I'm excited. Um, I'm happy to have all these things in my my shop. I think they are all really interesting. That's why I got them. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what they do. Uh, I'm happy with a $500 profit, uh, net profit. And my cost of goods, 83. I don't even know how many things I have here. Probably 15 or so. So I don't think that's a terrible, a terrible, um, Cost of goods, let me see. 83 divided by 15. I'm just estimating everything here. 83 divided by 15. That's about $5.50 average um, an item. And a lot of these things, like the trays, I got four of them. Um, I got multiples with a lot of this stuff. So that's it. That's my haul. And um, be sure to subscribe for future hauls. I'm also working on a day in life vlog. Um, of an at-home reseller, at-home parent, and um, that's what I'm doing today as well. So yeah, uh, like this video if you like it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, so I forgot uh, about four or five items because they were stacked on a chair next to me. So real quick, I'll show those. Um, these, the cost of goods for these and the potential profit were in my numbers I just shared. So I'll just show them to you real quick. Okay. Um, I got this for a dollar, and it's this cool rainbow, like, lap afghan. Now, a couple things I've never seen. There are, there's fringe on three sides, so I don't know if maybe they just 
we're done making it and they didn't want to do on our side. The other thing is it's 31 inches by 31 inches. So I listed it as a lap afghan because if you're sitting down, it will cover your lap, but that's pretty much it. So, um, and I was able to list that on Poshmark as well. So that's pretty cool. Next, I got this. Oh, I don't know where I got this. I guess it was, I don't know, yard sale or something for a dollar. Um, it's a top sheet or a flat sheet for a bedding, but it's this cool um, like vintage floral pattern. So it doesn't have any stains or anything. The hem in a few places is fraying a little bit, but so you could use it as a sheet or it'd be great for fabric for something like quilting or something. Um, this I got for four dollars, I think. It, it was labeled 1960s Afghan. So um, I'll open it up a little bit. Now this one, it's really strange because some of the stripes, so the purple and the gray, oh, see how that's a different texture than the rest of it? Hold on, come on. It's wool, some kind of wool. And in two places on the blanket, there are holes in just those two. So there's one hole. And where's the other one? Oh, right here. So I disclosed those. I don't know if it's because it, uh, it's a different um, type of yarn that it just didn't last through the years very well. But yeah, it's this cool chevron afghan with some nice colors. Like I said, it was labeled 1960s um, afghan. So even with the flaws, I think that it's pretty cool. And I mean, for, for its age, it's pretty good. The last thing I got for $10, I was going to keep it because I was told that it was a queen size. But it's not. It's a twin. So I got this. Um, this really pretty, like colonial star quilt. Ugh, I can't even. Hold on. Yeah, I'm trying not to hit the fan with my arm. Um, and I don't even know if it's really been used, honestly. But I can't say that it hasn't because I don't know. Um, it's a vintage quilt, though. So it's arch quilts from Hawthorne, New York, and they go for pretty good money. Um, when you spread this out over a queen bed, it reaches from side to side, like from edge to edge, but it doesn't overlap at all. So it is a twin. I, I looked up the measurements and it's more twin than a queen. So that's what I listed it for, but it's super pretty and vintage. So it went on all three platforms. I think I listed that for like 78 to start with. So yeah, so there, <laughs> now I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.